Yes, we are live. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Olumide Idowu, and I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, this is another month, and this is another edition of uh, Climate Wednesday. And this month, we're actually going to be talking about the Great Green Wall. That's a very big conversation that has been going on for a couple of years uh, that a lot of people have been talking about how we can get our environment, our nature to be the one that we want to see. And this month, let me first of all wish everybody happy new month. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm very happy to also have one of our greatest young person online, uh, Mr. Mohammed Samsudin Ibrahim and is somebody that is uh, very, very passionate about the environment. He has been doing fantastic work when it comes to the environmental issue. And I'm very happy to actually have him today in this call. Uh, as, we, as we all know, <clears throat> this month is gonna be dedicated to uh, the Great Green Wall. And he coming from the Northern part of the country is a very important uh, conversation for him. And today is going to be like a conversation because we want to actually see what uh, the Great Green Wall looks like and how we can continue to be more sustainable or making sure that our nature is better for all. So quick one, let me first of all do a quick uh, uh, recap of uh, uh, the Great Green Wall is an African lead movement with an epic ambition to grow an 80,000 kilometer natural wonders of the world across the entire world of Africa. And a decade in uh, a decade in a roughly 15% underway. The initiative is already bringing life back to Africa's degraded landscape at an unprecedented scale. Security, jobs, and a reason to stay for the millions who live along its path. So, the war promises to be a compelling solution to the many, but the global community as a whole. Notably, climate change, drought, famine, conflicts, and migration will be the largest living structure on planets, three times the size of the great Barren reef. So, uh, like we say, growing a world wonder. And I'm very apt region, part of Nigeria, where we are having this issue of uh, tree planting, desert encroachment, you know, desertification, and a lot of conversation that's actually embedded into the great green world conversation. So, today, um, I'm having Mohammed Samsudin Ibrahim. Welcome, my brother. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's good. To, it's good to have you. It's good to have you. So, quick one. Uh, can I just can you so that uh, 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 I want you to do justice for introducing yourself? Can you let us meet you? Who you are? What you do? And where are you talking to us from? Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm Ibrahim Mohammed Samsuddin by name, and uh, an environmental advocate uh, with keen interest in environmental stability. And um, I am live from Zaria, Kaduna State, Nigeria, and um, I'm the co-founder of Breakthrough from Plastic Initiative, um, an organization creating awareness on uh, internet with disposal and. Um, the need to live in harmony with our environment um making sure certainly it's relatable between the young and old to building a, an environmentally conscious society and um i also work as community resources in the climate and sustainable development network of nigeria thank you very please that's me yeah thank you very much uh, i know you are you have a lot of, you know, activism, a lot of activities and programs that you do and you work on. And that is very interesting. 
because you mentioned the Climate Smart Agricultural Youth Network, uh, that's uh, uh, the CS DevNet. Uh, I think uh, we are both on that uh, climate activity, that digital activism, which I think is one of the ways whereby young people can also yeah. drive conversation. Yeah. So, uh, quick one. Let's quickly go straight into our conversation today. So, can I ask, what do you know about the Great Green Wall? Exactly. Can you tell us? Um, well, uh, the Great Green Wall is it's one of the epic uh, planting uh, trees, uh, especially in the junior trees. Um, over eight thousand kilometers um, uh, landmass, um, uh, fifteen kilometer width, seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-five uh, kilometers in length. And um, one important thing about it is um, the Great Green Wall covers the Sahelian part of Africa, and they are the poorest and um, desertification. Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so I think uh, our guest is having a little bit of uh, internet issue. Uh, but uh, what we are talking about today is the Great Green Wall, and we want to see how this is affecting Africa entirely, and most especially we that uh, we are talking from Nigeria. We also want to see how the this conversation is actually affecting a country like Nigeria. And that is why this monthly series, our monthly series this month is for us to uh, have a conversation with our guests and to tell us about the Great Green Wall. We've seen a lot of work that uh, is going on, most especially uh, to the northern part of the country. And this conversation as well, we're going to be talking also about the tree planting that the, uh, our president actually uh, you know, committed to in 2019 in the United States. We're also going to be talking about what are the activities, what are the projects, and how we can continue to, you know, meet uh, the targets, our promises concerning the environmental issues across Africa and across Nigeria. Uh, also, uh, we're also going to be looking at some key speakers from academic background, we're also going to be looking at key speakers from the youth sector, key speakers from some agencies, and we're going to be looking at somebody from along the SAE group because we are not we are talking about the Great Green Wall. We cannot uh, 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 we must talk about some other countries that we have this uh, country across, and we are going to bring this bring uh, we're going to bring somebody from that uh, region as well as we know that the Great Green Wall is taking root in African Sahel region, at the southern edge of the Sahara Desert, and one of the poorest places on the planet, because uh, many more than anywhere else on the earth. This is a very big uh, conversation that uh, we, need to, we need to talk about. So uh, uh, the, the conversation is going to be broad, and we hope that uh, we have our guest back so that we can continue this conversation and make sure uh, so uh, i don't know what's going on uh, our speaker will be back soon um so uh, as i was saying so the, the great green world is a very big conversation that uh we need to talk about and uh, and the sahel is on the front line of climate change and millions of locals are already facing it devastating impacts, you know, persistent drought, lack of food, conflict over dwelling natural resources, and mass migration to Europe eh, are just some of the many consequences that we are facing. And you know, yet communities like Senegal in the west of the Djibouti, uh, Djibouti and in the south and the east are fighting back. Since the birth of the initial initiative in 2017, as in the Great Green Wall, 
life has started coming back to the land, bringing improved food security, jobs, and stability to people's life. And we can't talk about, as we're talking about this, Africa and Nigeria is one of the key countries that is also facing this lot of issue of food security, desert encroachment, uh, Africa and Nigeria as well is also, how can we look at not only planting trees now, but how can we look at growing those trees? Because a lot of conversation have been going on that we have been planting a lot of trees, a lot of, uh, two or three days ago, I think I, I, I've forgotten the name of the state now, he said they've planted one million trees and somebody requested and said, the tree they are planting, can they give us how many hectares of land they use in planting those trees? And some people said, if we have planted these trees, what are you doing when it comes to growing those trees? So it's a very big conversation that we need to understand each other. We need to understand the mechanism and how people are actually planting these trees. So uh, that's what we are going to be doing. So uh, our speaker is back now, I'm sure. We're going to be having a very good uh, connection today so that our speaker will be able to share with us the broad and the understanding of the Great Green World. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Ibrahim. You are back, right? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I have no focus. I don't know why the next was just to call. So, uh, please, another thing I will request that, uh, another thing I will request from you is that. Can you speak to your mic so that we'll be able to listen and hear you very well? Sorry, I didn't get you. I said, can you speak to your mic so that we can hear you very well? Okay, no problem. All right. Can you hear you me very hear well you? now? Yes, we can hear you. So when you are speaking, I think your camera is going too much up. Let it come down a little bit so that we can kick start. Okay, okay okay yeah so um, yeah okay. yeah thank you for thank you okay, for now, giving right? us that yes it's good like this thank you for giving us that understanding of uh, the great green world but what we are talking about today is the impact of as i said is the impact on biodiversity and you know biodiversity is a very broad conversation so can you mm -hmm. give us for uh, our audience uh, can you tell us Hello. Okay, you can speak, but please, can you use your mic? We can we can hear you very well. Maybe you should put the mic close to your mouth. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Wow, today we are really having a lot of uh, internet issue from our speaker. And I'm very sure uh, these are the kind of uh, issue we face in this part of uh, country. And I'm very sure that uh, uh, the internet is going to get better so that we can have him to speak to us. It's a very big conversation that we want to have today. And um, uh, if the internet is going to give us a little bit of a uh, problem, I think uh, I will be doing some a little bit of justification into this conversation today because this is this conversation cannot go like that we really want to know what's the impact of uh this issue of uh, uh issue of great green war is on our country so um so i i can see that we are still having issue with our brother but uh let me quickly also let us know that uh you know, the human and the environmental impacts are also falling a lot on the Great Green Wall. And every research, every organization, 
I've been doing a lot on how does the benefit of the Great Green Wall, what are the disadvantages of the Great Green Wall in, the, in a country like Nigeria is a very big issue. And I will be doing my best to also, you know, compliment our speaker on this conversation because uh, the buffering wall should, you know, should be like a stability soil and keep them moist. It should also, uh, you know, slow the drying and scoring effect of the wind. That's some of the, uh, uh, how does the Great Green Wall actually reduce the certification. And it's also help us to restore the microclimate and allowing food crops to grow around the tree. And these are the very good, important ways for us to start looking at the issue of the Great Green Wall. I'm, I'm looking forward to bring some key actors as well in this uh, conversation of Great Green Wall so that we'll be able to hear from us where Nigeria is actually is or on the issue of Great Green Wall. But I can see that our speaker is really, really having issue with his internet today. But let me quickly, you know, uh, just you know, tell us some things that I as a person personally uh, can talk about this issue of Great Green Wall. Uh, I've been able to, you know, do some research and uh, presently in Africa, scientists are, you know, are, uh, are to work restoring land once rich with biodiversity and veg vegetation. Almost 11 countries in the Sahel Sahara region, uh, talking about the Djibouti, talking about Eritrea, talking about Ethiopia, Sudan, Chad, Niger, Nigeria, Mali, Burkina Faso, Mauritania, and Senegal have actually joined to combat land degradation and to restore native plant life to the landscape. And these countries are countries that are actually facing a lot of land degradation and deforestation. In recent years, looking at the Northern Africa, I've seen the quality of arable lands decline significantly due to the issue of climate change and poor land management, you know, uniting under the ban of the Great Green Wall Initiative, you know, national, regional leaders hope to resolve this trend. And Nigeria is one of the country that has been, you know, signed up to this Great Green Wall. And the bulk of the work on the ground was originally slated to be consecrated along a stretch of land from the Djibouti in the east of the Dhaka Senegal and in the western area that is expanded to like 15 kilometers. And you know, and uh, the project has seen expanded, I'm talking about the Great Green Wall, to include countries in both the Northern and the Western African region. And this is a very big project that I think uh, for Nigeria to be a signature to make sure that uh, our land is taken back, our land gets those opportunity to, you know, to, to grow more trees, and to also bring back to nature. So uh, it's very, very, it's a very big conversation. And also land uh, degradation typically stems from both human related and natural factors. We talk about the farming, over grazing, climate change, extreme weather, are the most common causes beyond affecting land and the natural environment. So uh, if you don't know about Great Green World, I think you need to, you need to actually read about this Great Green World and see how this conversation is really something that is a big conversation for both the, you know, all the Sahel uh, uh, countries. And like I said, we need to start also looking at like what somebody is asking online, is talking about the benefits of the Great Green Wall. You know, we, we from what I've been saying, the benefit of the Great Green Wall cannot be overly emphasized. It's just for the Sahel, you know, and it's a global symbol for humanity overcoming its biggest threats and uh, our rapidly degraded environment it shows that if we can work with nature i say if we can work with nature in all these countries i've mentioned even in challenging places like the sahel we can overcome adversity and build a better world for generations to come and that is the only way we can benefit from the great green world so uh, I look forward to a lot of conversation, a lot of questions from us. And beyond affecting lands and the natural environment, land degradation 
pose serious threat to agriculture productivity, food security, and quality of life. And I, if, if you are with us on Climate Wednesday, you should have seen one of our conversation around food security and how is also contributing to the quality of life. You know, nowhere is this issue more urgent than in sub-Saharan Africa. You know, not only the countries that are online, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Great Green World or the Sahel country. We are an estimated almost 50 million people lives on land undergoing the certification presently, according to the National Geographica, and the most extreme form of land degradation. Africa as a country, as a, sorry, as a continent, we need a lot of uh, opportunity. And I remember also during my research when Jane Mark uh, Simpson is uh, one of the uh, senior environmental specialists with the Global Environmental Facility, that's the GEF, he helped manage a program Develop under the Great Green World Initiative with countries in the Sahel and West Africa. The GEF, which is the Global Environmental Facility, has been with the you know uh, initiative since the beginning. And so for us that is just hearing about the Great Green World, this has been a conversation that I personally have known since 2017. And uh, and uh, and the GEF has been with the initiative. Uh, sorry, and it has been helping to con convene countries' leaders at different headquarters in the United Nations. And these people are people that uh, are actually also seeing ways that we can achieve to make sure that nature is something that we need to care for. And the most uh, the, the one of the agencies in the UN that is actually focusing on this, the United Nations Convention to combat the certification in Bonn. And that is in, Gem in, in Germany. And this thing uh, started around 2011, and the World Bank and other organizations focus on the global development and the environment, provide financial and technical support. So for you that don't know about the Great Green World, it has been a long conversation that a lot of people need to really understand. And this is an urgent call, urgent message, message to our ministries that is handling this conversation to our governments, to, to, to individuals and NGOs that is handling this conversation to understand that, you know, uh, the partnership uh, needs to represent a unique opportunity for us to work across all the regions with a solid political base, because you know, everything is now looking at a political angle of conversation. So it's a very, very broad conversation that we need to start looking at. Uh, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, I think you are logging on. You log on into two devices, so you have okay, to off me, one device. Let me, log, let me log off my phone. Exactly, log off one device and let us have one device on so that we can talk. I've been doing a little bit of a conversation to let people understand the importance and the benefits of the Great Green Wall and how it's affecting our biodiversity and how it's actually affecting Nigeria as a country and what we are going to be seeing for the next one month, the conversation needs to broad down to different agencies, different sector want to bring online. I hope you can hear me, right? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, so quick one for uh, for more conversation. So that hope we can hear have... me now. Yes, I can hear you very well. So I was actually asking you that, uh, what is biodiversity to you? What do you think biodiversity is? Uh, as, as a young person, as an activist, as somebody that is coming from the region, from this, uh, the, from the northern part of the country. Well, um, I can call di uh, biodiversity to be abundance of life on Earth, ranging from um, the largest animals in the ocean or on land, such as whales, elephants to the tiniest insect like ants, mosquitoes. This abundance of life, the accumulation of this various type of uh, living organism um, is called biodiversity. Great, great, I, I great, hope great. I made myself clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really actually understand your uh, definition and it's something that is resonates with uh, a lot of our audience because a uh, big world, big conversation most times don't let people understand what this conversation is all about. 
thank you for that uh definition and okay so quick one from what i've been telling people online can one describe the great green world as being effective in solving the issue of deforestation and desertification and can it be considered as sustainable when you are looking at the framework of nigeria well, um, going back to the uh, five P's of sustainability, um, I think um, the Great Green Wall is, is effective. That is, if um, the, the, the required efforts are put in place towards ensuring that um, the 8,000 kilometers have been planted, um, even though I know um, the rate at which uh, the, the Great Green Wall is moving is a, a bit below expectation, but um, I would consider it um, effective and sustainable in such a way that um, it creates jobs and um, it, it amplifies the water absorption capacity of the soil, especially the areas mapped out for, for the world. We realize that most of these areas are Sahel and therefore they are most vulnerable to desertification. And um, so, in terms of sustainability, if and uh, only if um, the Great Green Wall uh, implementation will be done in accordance with uh, how it's expected to be, even though I know one of the challenges faced by the wall is a uh, lack of funding. But um, from my own perception, it is very sustainable and um, it will also motivate uh, people and inspire people, not just within that region, but all across Africa to imbibe on the, the, their consciousness that it is important to plant trees almost everywhere, even though more emphasis is given to that particular area. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, 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 also, I also think that um, it is also very important to start looking at a sustainable way because a lot of people, uh, like what I've been saying before, you have an inter uh, the internet issue. I also noticed that um, a lot of people don't really understand the Great Green Wall. A lot of people don't understand the concept behind it. And this is another avenue for us to raise more conversation, raise more awareness, so that people can be able to understand the importance and the benefits. Because if Nigeria is signing up to any agreement, people on ground should understand why we are doing that and why we actually want to understand or why we want to carry out, carry uh, other young people or other sectors, both private, government, everybody along in this issue of um, great green world. So thank you very much for being here. So another quick one is uh, understanding that there are threats to biodiversity. Would the great green world assist in eliminating such threats and how can this happen? Yeah, um, um, I think um, just like uh, earlier today when I was going through um, the, the reports uh, uh, provided in 2019, um, I came across something that actually captured my mind. I never um, observed it earlier on that um, there are about 37 different indigenous species that are recommended to be planted uh, across the great, great Green Wall. And um, I know we all know that um, majority of our endangered species are used to these uh, indigenous species, and um, they have, have um, higher uh, sequestration capacity. So when we talk about um, helping endangered species revive uh, their populations and um, existence, I think um, the Great Green Wall will go a very long way as far as such type of recommended indigenous species are going to be planted because um, most of these are uh, living organisms, especially those endangered species, are well versatile with all these indigenous species. So mm. if uh, such indigenous species will be made available or be planted, um, we are hope very, very hopeful that um, we will have a recovery of such endangered species, even though we are too late to, to get some of them back. But I think um, to go a very long way. So yes, the Great Green Wall is a good one towards um, diversity recovery and um, mitigation of the rate at which um, biodiversity goes to extinction. 
and um, some of them, the, the endangered species might reverse, um, the, the process might be reversed towards ensuring that um, such organisms actually live to the full, uh, to their full potential. Wow, thank, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. I, I'm so happy because you, you actually uh, mentioned that you've been reading a lot of book, a lot of research concerning the Great Green World, and which is something that is important for us, most especially most of us that are from the, uh, from the, from the youth angle. Maybe you can mute the mic when you want to talk, you can't, you, you unmute so that uh, the noise will not disturb a lot of people. So. I'm very happy that you you were able to do that. And one of the key things now, I want us to go into depth conversation, like uh, streamlining this conversation into the Nigerian perspective. Uh, because a lot of people, like somebody have been saying a lot of comments that a lot of people don't even know what the Great Green War is all about. And many of us are shouting, tree planting, tree planting, tree planting. Many of us are talking about food security and different other issues. I think it's also very important for us to understand that uh, uh, as we're talking about no one is left behind, leaving no one behind, then we need to start talking about how can we, as a, as a, as a civil society organizations, how can we, that we are different from the government, start looking at a way to contribute to this kind of conversation. So it's something that I want us to actually look into very, very well. So what, uh, what would be the impact of the Great Green War on wildlife? especially endangered species you know it's, it's, it's a very very big conversation what can you say about that actually um in respect to that um we uh, last year during uh, the the in-depth of the covid 19 uh, pandemic um a lot of scientists make made predictions that um the, the, the COVID-19 uh, is as a result of uh, we occupying uh, the environment of uh, some living organisms such as um, the pangolins and um, the bats. Various um, 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 scientists uh, try to prove that uh, it's from such type of living organisms. And um, these organisms are actually, majority of them are within the wildlife. So the more we deplete the forest, the more we get connected to them, and the more they try to fight back. And um, most of the diseases they live with, they are very detrimental to us as humans. So I think um, the Great Green World is a good one for wildlife, and um, especially if uh, proper uh, efforts are put in place to ensure that um, logging activities might not uh, happen uh, later on. And I think um, if uh, the Great Green Wall area will be left for this uh, living organism, I think it is a very, very important one for the wildlife because um, a, a distance of 8,000 kilometers is not something that, um, something small. So it's, it's, it's very good for the wildlife. And um, I'm sure that's not the, uh, some of uh, some parts of the Great Green Wall are already close to some forests within some parts of uh, the areas because uh, I'm sure it's mapped out across 11 countries from the west to the east. So um, the Great Green Wall is very important for wildlife as um, they will have enough grazing area, they will have uh, enough area for them to reproduce and uh, recover from the impact of our anthropogenic activities and logging activities. So I think um, the Great Green Wall is very, very important when it comes to um, the wildlife, especially with the fact that um, the area that is to be covered are the Sahelian areas and majority of them are desert areas. So um, we don't even know it might create a niche for other undiscovered biodiversity to thrive on Earth. So it's a very good one for the wildlife also. Thank you very much. That was, uh, that was good. So, uh, you know, um, my brother, it's a very big uh, uh, 
uh, conversation because um, a lot of people want to tie this great green world. Uh, please mute your mic. A lot of people want to tie this great green world to the issue of the tree planting. And it is not only about tree planting. That's what just I want people to understand. But for us in Nigeria, looking at our six geopolitical zones, how Nigeria has been divided, what are the impacts of this great green war in those areas? But you know, one of the most impacted areas is on the Sahel, others the northern part of the country. And, and when we are talking about, I will, I, I will actually streamline it as well because that's one of our key conversation here to the tree planting issue. So uh, let's dive a little bit about this tree planting conversation because I am very opportune to be one of these uh, 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 delegates at that conference in 2019 where our president commits to plant 25 million trees. Uh, we don't lie to you that uh, I was very, very happy to hear that even though a lot of people said that commitment was too small, was too low, considering the number of population we have in Nigeria. But I bet you, what has happened from Delta now, if truly that population is small. Three or four days ago, there's a report that says that a state have planted one million trees. And a lot of people start saying that those trees, where are they planted? How many hectares were, did they use to plant the tree? And this conversation has been what a lot of young people have been asking. And two, a week or, is or so, or two weeks ago, most of us were on a call where the department in charge also gave us that Nigeria have planted 18% of the two million, 25 million trees. And I think that was a, a, a loud conversation, a loud commitment, or a loud output from the ministry. And let me tell you, if 80% have been planted, as they say, or the way they said it, I can bet you that that means we've met uh, 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 ninety-nine percent of the tree planting that we are looking at. So, coming down to you, what do you think is the problem of this tree planting? What do you think has been going on? Is it because of COVID, or do you think uh, 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 the government is not doing enough, or do you think uh, there is no good direction? or planning towards this tree planting? Thank you. Well, um, you said 80% as uh, it's publicized, that is 20 million trees. Um, that's, <laughs> I'm not sure if, if that actually happened because um, I think um, I was discussing with someone from uh, Jigawa State yesterday, because I was in Jigawa yesterday, and it seems um, some part of Jigawa State uh, falls within uh, the Great Green World. And um, from even though I didn't actually go to check, but he told me he hasn't seen anything. So if and actually if uh, 20 million trees have been planted across those states, Sokoto, Jigawa, within northern Nigeria, even if there were rumors we would have heard, because um, there are a lot of environmental advocates across such uh, areas of the country. There are a lot of guys I know planting a lot of trees in Katsina State. There are a lot in Sokoto State. At least even if it's on their Twitter pages, Facebook pages, or conversations, because we always discuss around planting trees, especially with people from Green Foundation. They are from Kanu, Sokoto, and um, Jigawa State. Would have heard from them that this is taking place. Um, but if and only if that happens, then it's it's actually a significant landmark. But um, actually, I don't know, but that that seems unrealistic. But nonetheless, um, we know whether it's to be done or not. We have to take it upon ourselves to plant more and make sure they live to see the light of the day. Because um, the environment is the only thing that give us shelter, give us everything we need in life. So we have to make sure that our relationship with the environment 
is, is cordial and in harmony. And the simplest thing we can do is planting a tree and making sure it lives to see the light of the day. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Let me, let, sorry, mute your mic. Let me use this, let me also use this uh, opportunity to say that um, we need to also help the Nigerian government. When I say help, like um, complement their efforts to make sure that uh, they, they actually do what they said uh, they are you know, looking forward to do because this environment we are in today, today is the same environment all of us are in together. And for us to achieve this, we need a lot of commitment. We need a lot of support. We need a lot of collaboration to make those tree planting work. And I can bet you that before the 25 million tree pledge, a lot of young people have been planting trees. A lot of organizations have been planting, like you said. But the commitment is a commitment that was made by the government. So what are the mechanisms? What are the planning? to make sure that this commitment is being you know, achieved. So um, you and I also know that uh, when there's a political will, you just have to make sure you you also do the right thing at the right time. So thank you for, for that. I think uh, when I'm rounding up, I'm gonna be putting a lot of my own contribution on what actually we can do because we've gotten to a stage whereby we need to voice out and say something about what the environment is all about today. So uh, let me let me quickly ask you this. It is very important question from uh, from us that we play. So now that um, we've seen the the Great Green War as a very important conversation in Nigeria, what should be the you know the contribution of international organization, private sectors, individual in making sure that the Great Green War is a successful project in Nigeria. What do you think the, all the sectors, the youth sector, the private sector, the, the government themselves, the international bodies, what do you think they should be doing to make sure that Nigerian achieve the, uh, the great goal? Because uh, this will make me to say this. If you check all the countries that on the Sahel that is part of this great green world, you will see that Nigeria have the largest population. And Nigeria doesn't, we don't really have the landmass, but the largest population when it comes to this kind of conversation. So what do you think should be the contribution of international organizations, pop, uh, private sectors, civil society, and women, you know, these are everybody, every sector that's supposed to contribute to this. Thank you. Well, um, the contribution of uh, the civil society organizations, international organizations, individuals, I think um, they should lay more emphasis on ensuring that there is adequate monitor monitoring and evaluation of such an important project. And um, also one important thing that we should imbibe on is awareness. A lot of people are not aware of actually um, the problems, the threats, climate change is pushing towards us, especially people at the grassroots. So I think one key area where such uh, bodies should come in is massive grassroots mobilization for climate action. We all know that people at the grassroots usually, plant, in fact, it's in their nature to plant trees because most of them benefit from such organized, uh, living plants. But it is networthy. To, to make sure that they understand why they are planting these trees. Because usually they plant them, when they grow, they fell them down and use them as firewood or they sell them. But when they know why they are actually planting those trees, they will come up with better and sustainable ways to ensure that even if they are using those trees, they are not cutting them down. Maybe they will shave some part of it and use for their own uh, daily activities and make sure that that tree is still thriving for generations to come. So I think the two key areas is ensuring M&E, standard M&E, and also 
creating massive awareness, especially at the grassroots. And um, also, it is very, very important to relate this um, 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 Great Green World project or similar projects to the grassroots. For example, sometimes we we speak a lot of grammar, English. They don't understand that. Let us discuss in a language that they will be able to, to grasp. Let us discuss with them like family. They should know that this is very impo important for their own selves and the future generation. So it is very, very important we key into awareness, standard M and E, and mobilization of youth to support. We just don't have to wait for the government to do it alone. We have to also invest into the future of generations to come. So let's say as an individual, not just creating awareness, I can support with a seedling, a tree seed, or I plant a seedling. Let's say I plant a particular indigenous species. I can name it after my grandfather. Time to time, I'll be going to check to ensure that that particular tree thrives. So it's not only the responsibility of the government because we cannot lie to ourselves. They can never do it alone. And we too, we cannot do it alone. It is a collective responsibility. And we all know that taking care of the environment is a civic responsibility, not for the government alone. I and you and everyone listening to this uh, session must make sure he contributes to his best of ability towards ensuring that we attain environmental sustainability. And with the Great Green World, supporting it and creating awareness for people to understand what it is about, why it is to be done, and what are the benefits, not just for people around such areas, but for people around the nation entirely. Maybe if we haven't uh, um, occupied uh, the niches of living organisms like the bats and pangolins, we wouldn't have sat, spent majority of our time last year at home, wearing face masks, washing hands regularly. So the environment is also trying to fight back, which indicates that we have to live in harmony with the environment. And therefore, each and every one of us needs to amplify his efforts to support the government towards ensuring that this main goal is achieved. It looks like uh, you just, you know, Summarize and end the session for us today. Uh, please meet your mind so that uh, I, I really, I really appreciate your recommendation, and I'm hoping that uh, the ministry as well, they are watching us to understand that every sector, they are all ready to be part of this conversation because they cannot do it alone. We can also be. If we all can also support them to make this happen. So it's a very, I think your mic, uh, your, your video, okay. So it's very important that uh, all of us, we are ready to be part of this. So the quick, the, uh, the, one of the things you've said is we need to do a lot of awareness. And awareness is one of the key conversation to make people to understand the issue of the great green world. Secondly, you touch on monitoring and evaluation, which is one of the key things for us to monitor, to evaluate our efforts. Like they say, we've planted 80%. How can we monitor and evaluate this? What are the data in place? How do we drive those data to make sure that we use it for our success stories? So it's a very, very key uh, recommendation that you've given to us. And for us as an individual, to start taking responsibility towards making nature a better place for everyone. Because, you know, it has been a big conversation that uh, the Great Green War is going to be one of the key conversations this year, mostly for the side countries, sub saharan Africa, let me say that. And we need to start looking at the relationship between this conversation and what is happening to us as a country in Nigeria. We need to look at this topic and to also see what are the commitments we can help the government effort to contribute to. Because uh, the Great Green War is a big conversation. Like I was telling people the other time, it has been a conversation for the past year, 
like 2011 when this conversation started. A lot of things have been going on beyond the project, strong political foundations. It is carefully crafted approach, you know, for us to bring environmental benefits, both to local and global. And it's something that the initiative use an integrated landscape approach. I'm talking about the Great Green Wall. And it can also allow Nigeria as a country to address our land degradation, climate change adaptation, migration, biodiversity, and forests within our own local context. And I'm also using this opportunity to let people understand that it is high time for us to take responsibility and not leaving anyone behind. You get it. So it's, it's my honor and it's, I really appreciate your time for coming. But before you leave, because today is just an introductory part to what are the impact on the big biodiversity is one of the big conversations. So what is your, uh, 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 your, let me call it your call to action to the government or call to action to all other sector, all other groups across the world or across the Sahel uh, uh, region? concerning the great green world but specifically streamline it to what is your contribution what is your call to action for nigeria on this issue of great green world thank you well um my call to action uh, at this moment um i can say we need more more action and less talks because um it's late already so the best thing to do is put this the ideas are there the strategies are there, the methodologies are there. We don't have to keep revising them, they are there. The only thing we need is action. We want to plant these trees. We know the impact they are going to make. Then what are we waiting for? Um, I think um, today, if the ministry will say they, are, they have 20 million trees additional, and they want youth groups, civil society organizations, NGOs to make sure that these trees are planted. I bet you within the next 48 hours, they will be gone. Because um, we need to actually create a standard collaboration and partnership within between the government, civil societies, and individuals having passion for environmental sustainability. When there is communication gap, then definitely a lot of things will come up. Just like uh, you mentioned earlier that a report was, was released 25, 80% uh, of the trees have been planted. That's equivalent to 20 million trees. Even if they are planted, at least within these young uh, youth groups, NGOs within the country, some of them might have had idea of what is going on and they might get involved towards ensuring that there is standard M and E within their own area of coverage. For example, I made mention of uh, the organization in Jigawa. At least I'm sure if it is done, they will make sure time to time they support the initiative. So one thing I will call from the government is effective collaboration with youth uh, civil societies, community-based organizations, NGOs working on this area because it is very important. And we know that we have to give them the maximum support we can be able to offer. But, and we all know that they cannot do it alone. So having a standard collaboration between the civil societies and the government will go a long way towards ensuring that the awareness is being put in place, the, 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 the M and E strategies are there and fully implemented. And um, also that will spur passion from individuals, private sector, companies, to also support um, and the initiative. And um, I think uh, most of them can even do it as their community uh, CSR, which is very important to support the environment. I know we all need our clean air to breathe. If they will plant a lot of trees within the environment they are, uh, they are operating, at least even the, if they are emitting uh, some greenhouse gases, those trees might go a long way in helping to sequester such type of um, greenhouse gases. So it is very, very important that 
everyone, all hands has, has to be on deck. The government should create an avenue where civil societies, NGOs, and CSOs will get involved in ensuring that um, this goal, this ambitious and impactful goal is being achieved. In essence, the only thing we can say is we need more talk and more action and less talk, which is MALT in abbreviation. In fact, I think we should use this as hashtag towards pouring uh, amplified efforts towards achieving uh, the Great Grill War. So it's time for MALT. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Quick one before, before I allow you to go. You made me to remember my my uh my name actually i came up with some something like what you just said during my leap africa training um our group name was called more action less talk that's mort and it's something that uh i think is a very good conversation for the government for them to listen to what we call more action less talk and i, I can tell you categorically that I still believe that something can happen. I still believe our government is ready. I still believe that only if they give us the avenue to create collaboration and partnership, then we'll be able to achieve together. And uh, it's a very good, uh, uh, great honor for me to actually have you to bring that key point of awareness, M&A strategy, and to also give us that call to action to say more action, less talk. We need to track all those trees. We need to know where they are planted. We need to understand how our biodiversity is very essential for, for nature and how you and I, colleagues, friends, brothers, aunties, dad, mom, can start taking responsibility individually to make sure that the commitment of the 25 million tree as a citizen, we can take it further more than that, and we can do more. So I want to use this opportunity to say thank you very, very much for joining us today on an edition of uh, Climate Wednesday, focusing on the Great Green War. And we're going to be making sure that we uh, complete, uh, uh, make sure that we continue to do this and give all our audience good content of what you were just having. So. Thank you very much. And uh, before you leave, I quickly want to crave your indulgence to, you know, to actually let us know why you are passionate about the environment. What actually gives you that urge to start talking about the environment? Because everybody, everybody now is now talking about the environment. Maybe it's because things are not conducive again. So why are you passionate about the environment and what is your what is your advice for upcoming generation that want to also, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm saying environment in general. I don't want to say climate change now. Well, so what's going to be your advice to upcoming generation that want to do something that you are doing as well? Um, well, um, for me, there are two reasons and um, one led uh, to the other. Actually, I was born from, or I live in, in a grassroots uh, community. I think my house is less than a kilometer away from uh, the river. So we are in a kind of a riverine environment. And um, I observed over the past few years that uh, during rainy season, a lot of people lose their houses due to the rate at which uh, plastics and other uh, waste block uh, waterways, walls of buildings falling, the soil eroded. I've been thinking of a way to find a solution to that problem. And while I have been making, uh, while I'm making a lot of research to see how I can interfere in respect to that, um, my final year project uh, in my 400 level now relates clearly what I'm trying to address with uh, issues around food insecurity because um, the project topic uh, is targeted at the impact of uh, uh, food insecurity on the academic performance of uh, chemistry students in some selected schools uh, 
here in Zaria. So uh, in the process of uh, finding literature and other data, I was able to come across the, uh, the relationship of the nexus between climate change and food insecurity. And um, that widens my view of uh, the issue and um, it it's, 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 it's creates a niche in my heart that um, it's not something that I will just keep quiet and fold my hands. It's something that I have to get to action, something that I have to keep creating awareness because there are a lot of people around me that don't actually know the problem. Since I have the privilege to go to school to understand the issue why not start sharing with my peers and then getting to network with a lot of people having passion for the same thing sharing their experiences and knowledge and here we are wow wow that is that is wonderful that is wonderful thank you very much my brother, I really appreciate to have you today on this call. And I'm very, very sure that uh, you'll be available for us when we want to have you some other time. So thank you very much. And I want to call it uh, a day today because we've been here since uh, 2 February 5. Yeah. Sorry for the uh, network. And I'm sure Nigerian network will continue to get better. That's just it. Anything can happen anytime. I remember last week, my internet was a little bit shaky. But today, I don't know, my internet was just strong. Maybe it's just the weather or the timing. So thank you very much, Mr. Muhammad, Samsudin, Ibrahim. We're very happy to have you and have a blessed evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's actually a pleasure to share a bit, uh, the little experience I have. and. We look forward to creating more awareness towards ensuring that we achieve the ultimate goal of environmental sustainability. Even if we cannot do it, at least let's set paths to the ne to, for the next generation to continue from where we stop. And um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And let's do this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I'm very happy that uh, I was able to have that great bro on this call. He's a friend, you know, he's a family now because we are literally speaking the same language. Thank you very much for coming on board today, for listening to our call and getting to talk to us. I promise to bring somebody next week that is going to be you know telling us more about statistics numbers ideas what young people want to be doing and we're going to be having the person to speak to us in another dimension from this uh, conversation we have today and from what mr ibrahim have said he has mentioned a lot of things but let me quickly say this in in this case you know working to combat land degradation especially is the best way to address both very local issues and improve the global environment and you know working with land which is the basis of livelihood in each community is the greatest support we can give to our environment you know working with people to improve soil quality working people, you know, which improve crop yields and in turn, you know, agricultural production and overall quality of life in the community. And, you know, there's, a, there's no way you want to talk about land degradation, you not talk about farming, you not talk about agriculture, you not talk about soil, you know. These are very local benefits, uh, also a way for us to actually generate global benefits for water, land and nature. So I want to see a way whereby we are not really talking like what I get said, more action, less talk. White trees and forests are only part of the focus of the Great Green War Initiative. Many in all the media actually have cast the project as a solely a tree planting project. And 
we don't want to see it like that. And we also know that it has an attempt to halt the southward expansion of the Sahara Desert. So how can we talk more about not only the tree planting, let us talk about the issue affecting biodiversity in general, you know? So we need to look at uh, uh, those area. You know, the, the, the first is that the Great Green World Initiative is much more, you know, than simply planting of trees, you know, across the continent. But how do we grow those trees we are talking about? We are just planting, but growing and nurture the tree, you know, behind the same name of the brand called the Great Green World. It's different from people to see these things in another way. So as a Nigerian in Nigeria, some people saw just a stripe of trees from the east to the west. And but this has never been the vision. But the vision we are looking at is that we want to see how we can manage this uh, the, the, the land regulation can be managed by farmers that uh, can also be able to yield great results across the value chain. So today's Climate Wednesday, is uh, uh, this edition, is just giving us an understanding of what the Great Green was supposed to be looking towards. So, but, you know, because of our urgency, because of our, our, our conversation around the tree planting in Nigeria, we just have to lay emphasis more on how the tree planting is supposed to be. So how do we make sure that we build the wall how do we make sure that we look for the co-financing? How do we make sure that we look at the partnership that we foster uh, uh, the effort from the African Union, that we also make, uh, ensure that participating countries, we have the means to see the project through to the end. And Nigeria is going to be one of the beneficiaries. I know the, the $2 billion project uh, uh, that is part of the co-funding from the co-financing from the uh, World Bank, Supposed to need to now start looking at something that is more than this. So I look forward to having everyone on this call next week. Thank you very much. And I hope that we'll be able to bring more other people for you in this coming month. So stay with us on the Great Green World conversation. Thank you and have a good evening. Olumide Ido is my name and I'm the co-founder of International Climate Change Development Initiative. I appreciate my volunteers, my team, and every other people that have been working behind the scene to make sure that we are bringing this conversation to you, monthly editions, and we're also making sure that we're talking about issues that is affecting our environment. And you can reach us through our social media. If you want to be guests on our platform, you have something you want to say about this conversation, reach out to us at Climate Wednesday on Twitter, on Facebook, and you can also email us at info at iccdiafrica.org. Thank you very much and have a blessed evening. Bye.